Magazine, Detroit, baby, we out here. You see what's going on, we activated, we ain't playing no games. Without further ado, man, today on the platform, man, we got a special artist, man, that's been working for years, you feel me, putting in a lot of leg work, man, and decided that it was only right to stop by the platform, man. Mm -hmm. We got 3269 Shice or what is Chaz. it? Chaz. Yeah, yeah, let's man. get that right. So we're going to start this thing. Hardest name in the right. city to pronounce, man. Yes, Chaz. sir. Chaz. You know what I'm saying? If you can, bro, before we even move forward, can you talk about the meaning behind the name? You know what I mean? The meaning behind the numbers, you feel me, and how that whole thing even came about? Yeah, all well, right. Like you said, you know what I'm saying? It's Chaz, 3269, representer as always. Um, the name, you know, as I always tell people, I always give credit to the name coming behind like a jet pizza box thing, you know, situation. You know what I'm saying? I was young. I had some pizza one night and just so happened to be the same day that I was entering a talent show at my school. Um, I didn't know what name to use. I seen the name on the box like 1-800-CALL franchise. You know what I'm saying? So the franchise kind of stuck out to me. I go to sleep to um, watch a sports center. So when I wake up, is the new, you know, the new episode on. They talking, they having like a baseball story, but they talking about like the franchise player. So, you know what I'm saying? I took that as a little sign. And I signed myself up as a little franchise. Mm. Um, 3269, that come from me and my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Turks, dude. Um, we came up with a hip-hop group in the seventh grade called the D-Boys. You know what I'm saying? And um, we, uh, you know, we put together me and his um, two cousins. And we kind of like made it a big thing in our school, you know what I'm saying? But not just our school, but shit, our hood too, sure. you know what I'm saying? So it was like, we, we we basically came to find out it was a very popular name to use, you know what I'm saying? If you was doing music or whatever, it was a very popular name to call your click the D-Boys. So, you know, just, you feel me, after a while, man, we just... You know, I thought these niggas, you know, came up with it off the house phone, looking at the house phone, uh, 3269 spells D-Boy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's just to let you know how long we've been rocking with it. Yeah, that's what I was you about to say. You got a house like, phone, you know what I'm saying? Up. But it, it's on your little cell phone pad, too. So, um, yeah, and that's, that, that's where that comes from. Even just hearing you say that that was something that started back in seventh grade. You know what I mean? Yeah. That speaks levels to how long hip hop has been something that's really been a passion for you. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, which is, you know, rich is rare, especially in this time, man, where you got people who probably only been, you know, rapping for a couple years, you know what I mean? And just jumping in the game as opposed to somebody that's seasoned. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's been doing it, you know what I mean, for a while, man. So speaking about this year so far, you know what I mean? Just to talk about the present, man. What's been the mentality coming into the year? What's been your thought process? What's been your mindset? Elevation. You know what I'm saying? Um, better me, better situations. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't too, you know, I'm a simple guy. You know what I'm saying? I ain't too... You know, but I'm definitely different in my own way, you know, but for the most part, you know, just like everybody else, I I wanted to do better. But when it, if you're speaking on this music, you know what I'm saying? It's just straight work, you know, whatever, whatever it is, if it's running up videos, if it's doing interviews, mixed with shows and everything, as long as we consistently work it. You know, I, that was, that's what my mind was like. I, I can't can't stop when it comes to this. No doubt. And if I ain't mistaken, you dropped a visual at the top of the year in January. If I ain't mistaken, yeah, Road Runner. That was a uh, first lead single off of uh, Chameleon Sunday, which I had dropped in November. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, production. Can you talk about the the producer and you know what I mean who shot the visual and. You know, are are these people like? Do you have a set team when you 
rolling out your videos and when you actually like produce an <laughs> album or do you just venture out and just dabble with different people? Um, no, nah, it's all one person. And since the beginning, he decided to call himself Dot Game. So that's what I'm going to call him, Dot Game. But it's one person who directs and produce, you know what I'm saying, from the start. So That's hard. That's hard. That's hard. That's the truth about it. Yes, sir. Well, knowing that, you feel me, this year, it seemed like one of those years where, like you said, work, where you about to put in a lot of work. You feel me? You already started off the year putting in work. You know what I mean? Um, even with saying like, you know, I like the pro platform. We had a conversation prior to, you know what I mean, getting on the camera. You know what I mean? Very appreciative to, you know what I mean, your words and, you know what I mean, what you feel about the platform. Yeah. Um, well, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I always like to tell people is it's one thing to have an artist but then it's another thing to really understand what the artist's been through, understand the artist's journey. You know right. what I mean? I feel like that's what makes people real supporters and right, real right. fans where you can connect, you know what I mean, to that person's life story and the things that they've been through, overcame, to uh, show you where they stand at today. So if we can, man, let's go back to the origin, man, and let's talk a little bit about where you from, you know what I mean? What was your upbringing like? Uh, what was the vibes of the city with you coming up in it? Uh, well, you already know, uh, Eight Mile and Grasher is my stumping grounds. You know what I'm saying? 48205. And, uh, man, I had a, I actually had a childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, I just remember fun, good times. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. We was badass kids and shit, but we was kids, you know what I'm saying? That We were allowed to be kids, you know what I'm saying? Um, another thing was, you know, it's a saying, what, what's the saying? It takes a village. Yeah, it takes a village to raise Yeah, it, it takes yeah. a village. Yeah, that we actually had that village. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't automatically, you know, somebody say that your child did this or did that, the mother just automatically go off and, oh, like, you know what I'm saying? I got whoopings from teachers. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My mama gave all permission. And so, it's crazy because we live in a time where that's far. Yeah, man. You know? Like, there was a time where the teacher actually kept, like, a, a, a double ruler, like, taped together. Oh, kept that right in their uh, little first desk drawer. Wasn't even considered a weapon then. What would you say, if I may, like, what would you say being raised in those times as opposed to being raised in these times? What qualities would that produce in a young man or a young woman um, that would be different than what we're seeing now? Discipline. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the fact of the matter that, you know, when you was told something then or if you seen something, you know, happen, it was supposed to affect you of what either to do or what not to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if a person went through it, it was for you not to go through it. Now it's more like. You know, they, they, they glorify it in a way where it makes a it makes a motherfucker wanna go do some shit. Yeah. It make these young niggas wanna go, you know what I'm saying, kill and drink and see you know, get their reputation in jail and all that shit. Like For sure. you know, that was that was kinda like the difference, like well who I refer to as big homies and OGs actually, you know what I'm saying, gave me some game that still helps me to this day. Niggas weren't trying to make me out there do no dumb shit, you know, just to, you feel me, fit in, as they say, so. For sure, for sure. Did you have, uh, did you have pops in the household with you, or? Oh, single pair household. Siblings? Yeah, I got an uh, older brother that's 10 years older than me, and a sister that was 7 years older than me. Mm. So I was the baby, baby, like, when I was a kid, they was teenagers, 
mm-hmm. trying to go out and live. You know what I'm saying? They weren't trying to have me up under them, but sometimes it happened that way. In a situation like that, would you like? Did that kind of make you a loner? You know what I mean? With that age yeah. gap being so. Yeah, because I I gained as a kid, I gained people trust so well that they would just leave me alone. They just lead like I I was that one where if you set me in front of a TV with some, with some food and like fifty movies, bro, I'm good. You ain't got to worry about me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was that type of child. So a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that I was being watched over. It was like, you know, he good. He ain't going to cause no trouble like that. And there were times that I actually did. Right, for sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I took advantage of it, but I learned. You know, I had, it was consequences to that also. For sure, for sure. As time, like, you know, progressed in terms of you, you know, getting older, um, you know, entering into, you know, I would say high school. I would go to high school because um, I say this in every interview, man. The type of person that you are in high school kind of sets the base for for who you who you gonna be as an adult. It's kind of like an identity thing, right? Um, in high school, if you can, what high school did you go to, and what would you describe your personality as? You know, what I mean, in high school, I went to Harper Woods High. You know what I'm saying? That's when I graduated class in '06. Um, I mean, I would say like, for me, I think I was like balanced. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't. I wouldn't say that I was real popular, but at the same time, I kind of knew everybody. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't like, oh no, like I just hang with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like. I kind of was, I was balanced. Like, I wasn't no bully or nothing. I don't even think I had a fight in high school, honestly. Mm. Like, but at the same time, niggas knew I was a rider. You know what I'm saying? At the same time, if a problem was presented, I wasn't afraid to solve. But, you know, grace be to God, it never came to that. I was always covered. You know? So you weren't problematic. It wasn't no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was a roaster. Oh, okay. I was like, you get your ass roasted around me quick. You know what I'm saying? Right. And the thing about it with me was, it wasn't like I was like the freshest person or, you know, the one with the new Jordans every week. Like, I wasn't, I was, I used to be in school with house shoes. You know what I'm saying? House shoes, Nike shorts, tall tee. We good. You know what I'm saying? But you get your ass roasted for sure. You had to have some roasting skills. In order to, you know, survive. Plus, I played ball. You know what I'm saying? I played ball. So, you know, that got me in with all, you know, being a freshman, kicking it with the seniors and all that type of stuff. So, did you yeah, ever like? I, think I had a nice balance. Did you ever feel like the, the, like any pressure? That's just something that young men specifically go through in high school. Um, as you said, like, you know, like I was straight, you feel me, but I wasn't the kid that come in with all the Jordans, all of this. Did you ever feel any pressure um, looking at the streets, you feel me? And Hell kinda... no. Nah. I'm going to tell you why, though. I'm going to tell you why. Because the ones I went to school with, man, them niggas was really like, they peoples really was on, dog. Like, it wasn't no keeping up with some of them some of the motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? I'm just giving respect to where respect is due, you know what I'm saying? Like, some motherfuckers really just had it all, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I never I never looked at it like pressure. Now, my background, you know what I'm saying? My background is what I always stayed to. You feel me? Stayed true to. Like, I was raised to be clean, you know what I'm saying? Fresh and coordinate well, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you took your ass a bath and all that. Like, that was more important. Your hygiene is more important than what your clothes said. You know what I'm saying? As long as you looked presentable, that was the household that I came up in. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get really what I wanted. I always had what I needed. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, I never looked at it like pressure like that. Like, Oh, but it was crazy because I was cool with all the fresh niggas. You know what I'm saying? And like I say, niggas get their ass roasted fucking with me too. You know, but they roast me. 
straight up, straight yeah. up, straight up. So moving moving out of high school, you know what I mean? Um uh and research, you feel me? Um college. Yeah. Um, if you can talk about that experience. One thing about going to college, and I would advise, man, every young person, like I know the college uh, you know, like funds to pay the car. I know that that's something that that's been a major topic in terms of, you know, people having to kick out all of these thousands of dollars to go. But the experience, you know what I mean? Right. Of being around a bunch of different people and learning how to communicate with different ethnicities and all that all of that type okay. of stuff, man. I will I would want everybody to experience that. Um and your own personal dealings, man. Talk a little bit about that whole experience and you know what you gained out of it and just everything surrounding college. Okay. So my mind frame going to college, first of all, was to pursue music. You know what I'm saying? I had a situation while I was still in high school where um, you know what I'm saying, my life was put on the line and I and you feel me, I made it through unarmed, untouched, and all that. So I took that as a sign that I was here to do some things. You know what I'm saying? So let me make something of myself. Because honestly, I wasn't thinking about college at all in high school. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to come up with a plan to make the money. As long as I make the money, you know what I'm saying, we can get a build off that. Yeah. So... It was a situation that went down. At the time, I was in this organization called Team Hype, and I had went on a tour with them where they took me to L.A. to a conference to perform. At the conference, I met this uh, administrator for this school called AIU. So that's the school I ended up going to, you know what I'm saying, when I graduated out in L.A. Uh, it was in, like, Playa Vista, I, I believe. So the whole thing is to pursue the music. Mm -hmm. I'm straight out of Detroit, man, for for 18 years. You know what I'm saying? Finally someplace new. For sure. Bro, that shit hit me like 360, dog. <laughs> 360, man. Like from the from the culture to the surroundings to the women to the, um, the the people, the fashion, just everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything. So me, of course, I'm all Detroit. You know what I'm saying? I'm still Detroit. I, I got a jacket that say what up, no on it. And, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm wearing every day. So like college, like I say, I went in there with that mind frame. It's not what happened. Once they showed me where the studio was at, that's all my mind was on. You know what I'm saying? Was going in there, being in the studio. I looked at it as free studio. Right. But of course it was tuition pay, but like I looked at it as free studio. So when it came to the classes, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really fucking with them like that, you know? So when you in the studio, of course, you're going to meet everybody in media production. You know what I'm saying? Especially in this school. The studio was kind of like where, because it was, it, was, it was not too far from the cafeteria. The cafeteria and the studio, if I can remember, was on the same floor. So at some point, you know what I'm saying? You, you, path, yeah, yeah, you'll cross a path with almost anybody, you know, from being in that studio. So. You know how I go, man, you feel me? Me niggas, you rap, I rap, you smoke, I smoke. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? Damn, he actually a cool nigga and on, you know, just like that. So for me, it just turned into a big like, and on top of that, they put us in regular apartments. And I'm in Playa Vista, one of the most expensive places to ever live. Okay. So you know the crib nigga is top notch. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You say and, uh, and, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And it, it was like, you know, something new too, because at first I'm like, hell, man, I can't find a sister nowhere. Mm. You feel me? 
So it took, you know, like I say, it took some time to get into, but I would say in about six months, it was just an everyday party. For sure. For sure you know what I'm sure. saying? Like, for real, man. And as I look back on it now, you feel me? That shouldn't have, that shouldn't have been what it was, but as an 18 year old with the mind frame I had, man. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, so, so but at the same time, it was a lot of music made. I'm talking about a lot, a lot of diversity that allowed me to better myself as an artist. Like, that's the thing. I, it wasn't an actual complete waste of time. The benefit was I came out from L.A. knowing so many people and having so much different of a diversity with my flow because I had been around so many different type of artists. You know, I had did music with niggas. I was from Jamaica, you know what I'm saying? London, Philly, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, like over the whole map. It was like my school was an industry by itself. Mm -hmm. and, back, and if I may, back at home, what era was that? Like why you gaining all of this experience, building versatility and all of that? Back at home, what era was going on that, that was permeating throughout the streets musically? I believe that was um, Stretch. Mm. I think that was the Stretch, Team Eastside. I believe that was that, that period. Because at the same time, I wasn't deep into Detroit music mm. at that particular time. I mean, I rock with what rocked on the radio and what they played at the dances. But I can honestly say I ain't never listened to a whole Blade album. Right. You were, were if I am mistaken, you enjoyed hip hop. Yeah. Like the like what about like Jay Dilla and and like I didn't learn about Jay Dilla till I was in my twenties, damn near. Got you, got you, got you. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I was late on so much because I the household that I grew up in played nothing but old school. And I was on punishment a lot as a kid, so I couldn't listen to to rap a lot because my mama would tell me to turn everything off. But when I was listening to The Temptations and everything, she let me chill. Mm -hmm. So it's like, really, I grew up listening to a lot of soulful music. Mm -hmm. And that's why you hear it, you know, you kind of hear it with, with my music. Most definitely, most definitely. And at that time, even from an industry aspect, who were some of your influences and people that you was rocking with super heavy that you felt like helped you, you know what I mean, mold your sound? Or even if they didn't help you mold your sound, just industry-wise, who was you listening to heavy? Industry-wise, Jay. You know what I'm saying, Jay-Z. But it really came from home with my big brother. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Mr. Hood Life. I got rapping really from him. You know, he the one that taught me how to structure an actual song or actually have a concept. You know what I'm saying? Just because I remember when I first started writing, I used to just put punchlines together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 You know, a lot of Cassidy, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Lloyd Banks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of that mixtape era. Um, so, yeah, my, my bro, it started at home for me. Most definitely. Most definitely. And then one thing that stood out to me um, that you that you said, too, is uh, um, and of course, you don't have to. You know what I mean? But you said it's something that really pivotal that took place that led you to even wanting to take the college route. Um, do you care to, to lightweight walk us through? You feel me? That time, that experience? Yeah, I'll never forget it. Um, I was doing a show at. Um, the Northwest Activity Center. Now, I'm an east sider. You know what I'm saying? I'm young, so I don't really know the map like that. I just know I'm far away from my hood. Yeah. So, but I ain't thinking nothing of it. I'm at the Northwest Activity Center doing a, um, doing like a talent show or it was some type of show. And uh, it was the same night as Oak Park's homecoming. You feel me? Um, I had performed and then I had these two, I had this chick come see the show, see me perform and she was going to leave at halftime. 
So when the halftime came, she texted me to meet her in the hallway. But this just so happened to be the same time that everybody out of Oak Park and, and at they dance is coming. So it's like everybody is, you feel me, seeing each other. So I see the chick. I thank her for coming, whoop de whoop, talk or whatever, whatever. Walk her um, to the dough. Boom. The only reason I'm bringing that part up is because this is when I think I was seen. You know what I'm saying? So as I, I came with an individual because I wasn't driving at that at that time. Mm-hmm. I came at that time. You know, I thought I was, I thought I was doing something. So I used to have like a show bag. You feel me? I have a show bag where where I'm performing in all my clothes is in the bag. I ain't gonna change until I get to the show because that's what industry and stars do, Dude. right? <laughs> you had it all locked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what industry and stars do. So um, I'm leaving out now. Everything that I got in the bag is what I'm performing with on stage. I had two pair of yay glasses that I got from my from my nigga and shit. One was real, one was fake. The whole thing is I'm not putting the real ones on until I go on stage. When I went in the hallway, I had the real ones on my face after I performed. Mm. But when I, you feel me, went back to change until what I actually came in, I took the real ones off, Mm. put the fake ones on. We leave it. Carrying my bag, we leave it. As I'm getting in the passenger side, I just feel that bitch on my head. You feel me? My man, like, come up out of those, my baby. You feel me? So I look up. Nigga, I'm surrounded. You feel me? Everybody got Al Weezy's on and yay. I'm surrounded. You feel me? So I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? By this time, when I threw my hands up and realized what the situation was, a nigga that already came from behind me and took him off. So when he took him off, you feel me? I could still feel my man on my shit. So that's when I tell myself, like, damn, bro, niggas going to really kill me, though. Like, he got what he wanted. I know that's what they wanted. So why the gun ain't off him? You feel me? That bitch still on me. Real shit, bro. I just so happened, because I had my head down, you feel me? I just so happened to look. Because the door was open. I'm between the door and my man on the other side of the door. I just so happened to look at my nigga in the driver's seat. Bro, he putting that bitch in reverse. Mm. You feel me? Not a signal. That nigga putting that bitch in reverse. So, I thought quick. Like, you know what I'm saying? By this time, my man is in front of me. So, it's not on the back of my head. It's bro, he in front yeah. of me now. So just out of instant, nigga, I kind of like swiped his hand quick, but at the same time, dove in. Once I hit his hand, bro, that nigga let go. You know, I'm feeling the heat on my leg as them bitches bouncing, but we in reverse. We smack the car behind us, and he dash out the parking lot. So you know what I'm saying? If you check out Road Runner and you hear the line, you know what I'm saying? Before I turned 18, I got, you know, I, where'd it go? Before 18, you know what I'm saying? I said a line in it. But, now we're but that's, that. what that's, that's what that's referring Damn, that's to. that's crazy. You said that was the shot. Yeah, almost got shot before I turned 18 for some yays and a diamond ring. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. And that just go to show you, like, like you say, everybody had on Alwa signs around the, like, People don't really understand because that shit done kind of died down now. Yeah. But people don't really understand that time in Detroit where yeah, that's that when Yay snatching was the, was yeah. That's when that shit was at its all time. I, that was like the prime time of uh Yay snatching. When you think back on that shit, man, <laughs> just how silly, you know what I mean, or or even just like how quick a person to be willing to to harm. Yo, yo, brother, uh, another black person over material. Like, what's your thoughts just in general on that, though? Like, 
don't don't be the don't don't increase it or don't be a follower of that shit. Like it's cool to say that shit whack. You know, like that's what I mean by I've always thought different because I've never been ashamed of my background. I've never been ashamed of my foundation. Like at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I was raised by good people. You feel me? It's just the environment that I was raised in was real. So at the same time, I kind of like got to see the best of both worlds, but still left with my own choices. No doubt. I made some wrong ones, you know what I'm saying? But I also feel like I made some that got me to the point where I'm at right now. No doubt. No doubt. So it's like, um, yeah, that shit, was, that shit was petty, man. No doubt. It was so- petty, but at the same time, it was the thing. Nobody didn't want to be caught without no yays. Real talk. And if you had to get them by that way, they was willing. Real talk. <laughs> Especially if you was sick. fast. And they would have been sick, though. Oh, well, they clearly had to be sick because the, the real ones was in the bag. Hey, the um, like I say, it was an Oak Park homecoming that night. You feel me? My, my brother, Pops, ended up having a niece that went there at that time. And word was that you know what I'm saying, Nick. When niggas found out it was uh, it was fake and shit. It was like a big laugh, like niggas clown. Like man, this nigga was about to kill that old ass nigga over these fake ass glasses, and like so it was already like it was already on the flow if a nigga wanted to put some, you know. For sure, for sure, for sure. So progressing, moving forward, um, you gain all this experience in college, um, got to work with people from different kind of backgrounds, uh, polished your, your game up, um, exiting out of college, what was the plan musically? Like, what was your next steps? What was your next moves? Like, when I exited out, by that time, I was in Atlanta because the same college was there. So after a year and a half, I transferred to Atlanta. So when I came back home, my whole thing was, you know what I'm saying, getting back to the music with, with the group. You know what I'm saying? Linking up with my niggas. Because by that time, they was back home. He he went to Langston, I believe. He was back home from there. So, you know, let's get our studio equipment. If we got to go, you know, pay for the studio, whatever. But let's come up with something. No doubt. And um, we did. You know what I'm saying? We came up uh, with a project called um, Studio Versus the Strip Club. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. At what at what point did like yo like I mean because even going from there to um having any type of um uh, gospel you know what I mean musical influence like what was your decision like what was the mentality that played a factor into you getting into that world and, and and you know putting your stamp or putting your influence on on the gospel scene? I ain't come to recent right basically. You know what I'm saying? Because of just how, you know, life was working with experiences and everything of that nature. But it's like, it it always been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, from if I did a hook or just how I am comfortable from a crowd, like all that comes from the church. You know, if if you really think about it, the preacher was like the first MC that I was actually introduced to, you know, because that was the first person I seen control the crowd. Yeah, you know, with that posture of voice holding the mic. Yeah, so, it always been there, you know what I'm saying. But I just, just recently throughout the last like four projects, you know what I'm saying, I, I've been going back to the roots. So how I mean, how do you go about that? You know what I mean, without uh, because you know, like some people that do gospel, you know, music, gospel rap, it comes off right. as lame. You know what I mean? Um, even though it's not technically, you know what I mean? We understand the value I mean, when it. Some it comes, do. Yeah, yeah. Some do be on some lame. I ain't gonna lie. But it's only because, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't stand the type that try to use, like, remember when Lil John Beats was was the hottest, yeah. you know, he was the hottest producer. And, you know, it'd be a nigga trying to make a gospel song off a of Lil John beat. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, like shit like that. Yeah. Like, you know, like, man, come on. You know, that ain't really the, you feel me? Even though all is accepted, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I wasn't knocking it, but it's like when it come to presentation, no, nah, bro, this ain't, this ain't it. What would you, know? you come? Soulful? Like, sample? Yeah. Type? Yeah. Because that's where it all started. You know what I'm saying? Gospel was here even before the instruments. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to have a beat in the old church. Most definitely. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, okay, so just to rewind, um, because I ain't know the gap in between um, you doing the gospel music and then, like you said, coming out of But that's the thing. I've never just strictly done gospel music. Got you. Got you. You know what I'm saying? I've it's never just been like trinkets of, of wisdom in it. You feel me? Right. Or how would you describe that? I mean, I would describe it as just real. Like, I'm just being me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not all preachy and, you know, I, I can't, I don't feel like I'm nobody to judge other people. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't be on no judgment or trying to put this in your ear type thing. I just be talking about me and my situations and how I feel about it. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I'm just expressing what I've been going through. No doubt. You know, and if it involves thanking God, so be it. No doubt. And you say you did the last four projects. If you can, talk about the name of those projects just to bring the people abreast so they can know what exactly what to go back and look at um, and what's been the time frame that you've been putting these projects out because – um, to my understanding, the pandemic, like coming off of the pandemic was like a pivotal moment uh, for you. Uh, right. So talk about coming out of the pandemic and step by step, like project by project leading up to today. Um, coming out of the pandemic, um, I was working on, I had a, I ain't going to say I was working on, but I was, I had an idea of trying to put together a project called Club Shirley's. What ended up happening was because I did end up coming up with like 16 tracks, but it was like a feature on like 14 of them. So it was sounded more like a Chives and Friends project more than me putting out a solo project. So I had to erase that. So I was kind of left in the dust. You know what I'm saying? But just whatever is going to be my move. But at this time, I'm still doing open mics. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, um, you know, making videos for the content that I that I got already. And um, I get an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, from, you know, my homie B. Scar. He called me with an opportunity to do a record uh, with, a, with an artist of his choice uh, with a record called Soul Food. You know what I'm saying? So we do the record, gets a great response. From that, he comes back to me and presents me with an opportunity to um, go in the studio with P. Dot and record this record called Coney Island. You know what I'm saying? We do that. Gets a good response. We do a video to it. From, well, before, you know what I'm saying, before the video and everything, we already had got motivation from the song to create a project. Yeah. Create the project, drop the project with the video. Next thing you know, Coney Island one turns into two, two turns into three. So that's basically the next like two years, 20, uh, 20 and 21, 20 and 21. You know what I'm saying? That takes up that. In the midst of doing all that, we went on tour. We did interviews out of the state. We touched the radio. You know what I'm saying? We had, you know, good opportunities, business opportunities that was on the flow. Never went through, though. But you know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of movement going For on. Sure. Circled around that. For sure. From there, he comes back to me, and he, he presents um, a situation with me, P. Dot, uh, Sinatra, shout out to him, and Sig Dollar. 
to do a, a record, but how we going to bring it in is by doing, you know what I'm saying, um, this record called Original Sin. So, you know, that was all just one session, if I remember correctly. You know what I'm saying? That project, which is called Fuck a Demo Tape, you know what I'm saying? That project was all done in one, one session. Huh. So that turned into a video for the original scene. And, um, <clears throat> my bad. After, um, basically, um, doing the promotion run with that, uh, I went back into the studio and I, that's when I created my solo project. Um, Mason May, Volume One, Janice Baby Boy. Uh-huh. Am I? I feel like I'm missing something. Club Shirley's, Club Shirley's was dropped before Coney Island, wasn't it? Well, after, after, after the first one, Club Shirley. So that was officially my first solo project. Yeah. But we went back to the drawing board with B because you know what I'm saying he wanted to do a solo project with me from the very beginning. But all those other opportunities presented itself, and we kind of went with the flow. Most definitely. So this will actually be my second solo project that I'm talking on, which is Mason May Volume 1, Janice Baby Boy. Um, With that came the video and the single, Archer Lee. Um, Where I Want to Be, video and single. Uh, I think that was it off there. Even in speaking about this this uh, recent project, um, what was your like thought process in it? Like, cause obviously the name seems like it, you know, hold like some sentimental value. You feel right. Me? Uh, what was the process in, in putting this project together? Oh, uh, I mean, when I think about it, it, was pain. You know what I'm saying? Because the space in between that life was. You know what I'm saying? Life hit me totally different um, with experiences of um, heartbreak, heartbreak, you know what I'm saying? Uh, depression. Um, you feel me? Just, you know, going to that loner, you know, going into that loner mode and just experiencing life in a different way that I hadn't experienced. So I had to kind of like snap back and, and go through it but still catch myself and then from there I rebuilt myself I you know what I'm saying which um brings in the whole you know we made some made and not only that I'm Janice baby boy and if you listen to the first track on there my mama is uh on the first track you'll see why I say you know what I'm saying you'll see why I say that for sure for sure for sure um and, and speaking about B you know what I mean um What's been, you know what I mean, his role and, you know what I mean, like, what's been the level of appreciation or whatever it is that you feel in terms of your relationship and, you know, just what role he played in, into your artistry? Oh, man, he played a major role. Like, he basically, you know, like the difference. Beforehand, I had a project, before I linked with Beef, I had a project with um this Detroit producer, Merch music, shout out to him. You know what I'm saying? Called Chop Suey. And Chop Suey was really more, you know, backpack, Detroit underground, smooth hip hop. So I developed a following. I developed a hard following, you know what I'm saying, with that. So when I linked with B, his whole thing was he didn't want to replace or take that by working with my talent but he wanted to add to it Mm -hmm. because he's seen the diversity that I had where it came to being in different pockets. Yeah. So, um, you know, it was, it was, it was an experience like some missed, some succeeded, you know what I'm saying? Some balanced out where we, we learned more about each other, about how the music come out. And, uh, I think, you see that in each project as it go along, like the music only gets better and better and better. So, so all that credit to him. You know what I'm saying? Ain't lie. One hundred, one hundred. 
going out the rest of the year, um, tell the fans and supporters, you feel me, what to be looking out for, um, what you got planned, man. You know what I mean? It, it, after listening to your, you know, your story and your journey, um, I can't lie, I'm interested in seeing, you know what I mean, what's next. Um, tell the people, you know what I mean, what's next for you. Um, it's still working, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, I've put out a collective music where I can, it's time to work it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about hitting these platforms like yours. You know what I'm saying? Letting my face be seen more, create more content. But at the same time, we still promoting the music with videos, shows. Um, you know, we going to have little, uh, I just did the, um, WJLB freestyle yeah, with okay. Big Dog Blast. Yeah, shout out to You know Blast. what I'm saying? Yeah. More like, more content like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. It's so, all, you know, whatever opportunities presents, you know, but I know in order for it to present, I got to keep it moving. No got to stay consistent and uh, got to keep, you know, got to keep the brand good. No doubt, no doubt, man. Well, Y'all heard it here, man. Any last words to you know, your people, you know what I mean? The day ones, you feel me? And anybody that's looking at your your story or, you know what I mean, anything that you would like to tell the people. Shit, I appreciate y'all for taking y'all time out to, to listen to me, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you still awake, you feel me? I appreciate you, you know? But no, um, check out the music, man, you know what I'm saying? You can go to my website, dboysound.com. That's my official website. All lowercase. Once again, dboysound.com. Um, you feel me? My Instagram is 3269chise. You know what I'm saying? I got a YouTube channel, Mason Made. Every single video I have dropped going all the way back to my first ever mixtape, something special. You know what I'm saying? Every video is on there as well as the website. And uh, yeah, check it out. 3269. You know what I'm saying? That's a project. My latest project, Communion Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Check that out. More videos to come. And uh, this music only gets better. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir, man. Thank you for rocking with me. Oh, shit. I got to hit the mic. No, you good, brother. I'm yes, good, my bad. Thanks for rocking with me, though, man. No doubt, my Thank brother, man. Y'all heard it here, man. 3269 Chives, man. Y'all make sure y'all tap in. Coastal the Culture, Foreign Magazine. Let's get it.